Hey guys, hopefully you guys can hear me. I have to talk quietly. Um. Hmm. Oh, excuse me. Wow. Just gonna wait for some folks to show up here. Um. You know, guys, I don't know if you guys know this, but uh, at the moment in Israel, there is a, a very, very, I would say, serious discussion, but it's not so necessarily public, but it is happening. It's happening in the media here and there. Mainstream media, it's also happening among reputable doctors. And um, what they're talking about, these people are talking about, is basically whether or not, uh, you know, the Israeli government, primarily the Prime Minister, both Bibi and Bennett, the Ministry of Health, whether or not they, um, you know, ethically and lawfully um, made a system for reporting um, issues with the you-know-what for example, in America, you at least have, you know, um, some kind of system, even though it's very flawed, right? To the point where you reference it and people tell you, well, that's that's a flawed system. So you say, well, what, am, what else am I supposed to go by? What else am, where else am I supposed to get the data from to show you the issues, right? Or at least America has had this system for a while. But Israel, until recently, did not have the system, and when they finally created one uh, electronic system, they never, they didn't notify anybody. They just, maybe doctors knew about it, maybe, but I don't know, I don't think that they were using it so extensively. So, as far as Israel is concerned, with, when it comes to, like, adverse issues, we don't know, we have no idea of the numbers. We have no clue. Um, because there's, there was no way to report, and nobody was reporting. It was a black hole. So right now there's a discussion among, you know, these doctors and even lawyers whether or not uh, this is ethical and, you know, whether or not the Israeli government was allowed to even follow through with this. Uh, I'll tell you guys something. As a result of this, um, as a result of this, um, people, even the people who took two and even three of you-know-what, Right? They don't. People in Israel, they don't trust um, the Ministry of Health anymore. How do I know that? I know that because first of all, two weeks ago, the Ministry of Health posted something about, uh, you know, minimal side effects from the you know what, and they got on that post about twenty thousand comments from Israeli citizens. Um, you know. Uh, basically talking about their own adverse events and either their own or their relatives and friends and, and we're talking about stuff like uh, you know, no longer being here so to speak, nifter but also injuries and so what did the Ministry of Health do? They scrubbed they tried to scrub a lot of them they ended up scrubbing about, about 5,000 out of the 20,000 comments and when they were called out on it, why did they do this? They did this one in one evening, over two or three hours, maybe more. They said, yeah, it was just a lot of people cursing and uh, threatening us. Which is obviously complete BS. So my friends, as a result of this, and the fact that, you know, people are just all over the country, their relatives are, are having issues with this stuff. Um, the... And I can tell by the comments that they're leaving on other posts in the Ministry of Health's Facebook page, and also on Twitter as well. Uh, Israelis don't trust the Ministry of Health anymore. They don't trust their government anymore. Okay? And frankly, I mean, I'm looking around. I was looking around when I was in Israel, and even now, from kind of the outside looking in. You know, as I like to say, the hummus is about to fly in the face. You know, we say, the, the you know what's about to hit the fan? Uh, the hummus is about to fly in the face. 
And it's not only going to fly in Israel, it's going to fly around the world. Because you guys got to remember, like, honestly, guys, everything begins and ends with Israel. Israel, I was watching this whole trajectory since the beginning. You know, Israel started this whole green passport thing. Israel started the lockdowns. Israel started all the protocols that you guys see today all over the world and to varying degrees. And you could see it like, for example, in Australia and New Zealand is like on steroids, right? They were first started in Israel. We led the way. We led the way with the, you know what? With this, you know, administering it. And then we led the way with all the policies. Our prime ministers led the way with all that kind of stuff. Um... The only thing that I will say is that, and I'm speaking from personal experience, you know, being in Israel, it, it sometimes doesn't even matter what <clears throat> what the government does. You know, there's a big difference in what the government, you know, the decrees that the government brings down and what actually happens on the ground in real life, you know. Because in Israel, at least you have, you know, what I like to call the hashkacha of, of Hashem, right? You have like, Things that happen where Hashem is kind of just like guiding you, depending on your how you, I guess, connect to Him, or or the strength of which you connect to Him, or your Muna and your Bitachon, Hashem is going to help you kind of just skate by in society over there. But you can have the same policies enacted in other places, and you know you're not going to get the same results, right? You're just not going to get the same results. You know, for example, I'll, you know, I was in Israel for, for the past five months. It's interesting, guys. You know, the only people who really care about this Tavi Rok stuff, you know, this green passport stuff, <clears throat> ironically, are the Americans <laughs> and the Anglos. You know, these really, I don't, I don't want to say uptight, but these just these really, I would say, machmir people who really care about that stuff. <laughs> You know, who organized events and all these kind of things. And, I, and, and you know, I always said, I don't want to be part of a club that won't have me as a member, you know. But, um, and, and ironically, you know, who didn't care about these things? You know, you're talking about all the restaurant owners, the small restaurants, the small shawarma shops, you know, all over Israel, who lost a ton of business in the year 2020. And then they, you know, they were able to open up again. And these people are, are fully, you know what, they took two, two, you know, they took it two times, they took it three times. These owners, these people that work there, and they don't really, they're not going to lose any more business. They, they don't really care. They'll let you in. Yeah, if they, you wear a mask, you don't wear a mask. They're not going to lose any more business because they saw what happened to their friends who lost the business. And some of them even like, you know, hasa shalom, you know, just you don't want to know. Okay, so, you know, you can kind of skate by over there, but, but you leave Israel and it's kind of, so I was just going to say, so, so you have people like that, you know, who are fully this and that and the other, but they don't really care about that stuff. Um, you know, guys, two weeks ago, two weeks ago, um, an Ethiopian who actually, I reach, researched this guy, He's part of Likud, or he moved to Likud. He used to be in 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 uh, Kahol Lavan in in uh, Blue and White Party. He uh, he was actually like what was it a year ago? He was talking about how he was appalled by the whole whole George Floyd thing, right? So he's not exactly like I don't know right wing or what you would call right wing, right? Or yes, or if he was in America, he wouldn't be fallen to right wing. But he's part of Likud, so I guess in Israel it's a little bit different. <laughs> Um, this guy came out on the Knesset and he basically made a speech and he said, ladies and gentlemen, um, the Ministry of Health of this country, of Israel, is inciting um, against regular citizens. People who took one, people who took two, people who took zero, people who took, even people who took three. It's inciting against regular citizens. And what's eventually going to happen, he says, is that you're going to push them into a corner and you're not going to like the result. And this is me just adding this. I'll tell you guys, you know, what I noticed, and this is kind of a little bit came as a surprise to me, that 
Israelis have been really docile, you know, when it comes to like protesting and, you know, their freedoms and going against the government. You know, guys, honestly, I think a lot of people, I mean, it's funny because in America, it's, it's the opposite. People who are quote unquote conservative or right wing or freedom loving, they'll go protest, you know, they'll go protest against the government. But in Israel, regular people, right wing, traditional, Masorti, they can't be asked. And I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that, you know, since the since the founding of the state, they were basically conditioned to, you know, because of all the conflicts and all the wars and all the emergencies, intifada, terror attacks, they were basically conditioned to um, just comply, just whatever the government says, you know, you do, right? The government's all-powerful and all-knowing. They know more than you. They have all this intelligence. They have all these you know, Shin Bet and Mossad and all that, you know, it's like amazing, right? High tech, high tech, high tech, you know? So, and also there's like the mentality, like Malasot, like, what can we do? You know, I had a friend tell me, he's like, what can you do? I'm like, there's a lot you can do. And I have to do because my Parnassah depends on it directly. Because right now we have a situation where we have like ships out at sea for months at a time and I need to ship out wine and I can't, or I can, it'll just be floating around. And I can't have wine floating around the sea for months at a time. <laughs> Two or three months or four months. It's absurd. My friends, this affects my pronounce. So I have to do something. I have to I have to fight. I have to talk. I have to go. I have to protest. I can't not, you know, I can't uh like sit idly by, you know. You know, my friends, it it it, it reminds me of when I was in Kikartzion, I think I mentioned this. You know, perfect example, or an extreme example, this Haredi kid comes up to me, this very, very sweet, modern Haredi kid, he goes, you see me? He had an accent. You see me? I'm Haredi. The government hates me, but whatever the government says, I do. My friends, I mean, this is like, you start to realize that, like, the people are just conditioned to believe that the government knows everything, and the government is telling them to do it, and you have to do it. And now we have a situation where, and I, and I mentioned this before, where even the Haredim are integrating so much into the state to the point where they are turning the state into some sort of idol. And so, I hate to say it, Abu Dazara. Um, and I think the rough cook, uh, I guess the Dati Lumi sector also have already done that. I mean, I think they did that a long time ago, but now it's on full display. And, I, and ironically, guys, I never thought I'd say this, but this is something that the Haredi rabbis uh, foresaw. They saw the da potential danger of that, you know? You know, where a rabbi comes out and says, you know, a big rabbi, a big rabbi comes out and says, it's a mitzvah to take this stuff. It's a mitzvah. I don't see it anywhere in the Tariyag Mitzvot. I'm sorry. I don't see it anywhere. I don't see it anywhere, as we say, inside. I don't see it anywhere... I don't see it anywhere in the text. I don't see it anywhere in, you know, philosophy books. No, it's not a mitzvah to take this stuff. It's a mitzvah to daven to Hashem and to take care of yourself, your health. But it's not a mitzvah to take something that's being given to you by proven criminals and liars. That's definitely not a mitzvah to give to take something that was given to you by people who got sued for nine billion dollars for, you know, ten years ago. That's not a mitzvah, my friends. It's, 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 it, under no circumstances is it a mitzvah. But I'll tell you guys something. What this, what this um, Ethiopian fellow in the Knesset said, you know, at some point, people are going to do, they're going to be pushed into such a corner, right? Maybe when they have to take the fourth or the fifth, and they'll see, you know, Israelis are not stupid. Israelis, you know, it's a, it's a country full of Jews. <laughs> You know, what is it, 7 million prime ministers or whatever you could say. So, people will see that the jig is up. You know, as I always said, you know, people are going to pull out their investment out of this Ponzi scheme. And when they start to pull out their investment, right, the whole thing's going to collapse. And when it collapses, my friends, they're going to come out onto the streets. You know, it's not going to look pretty for the government. It just, it just isn't. And what's going to happen after that 
is that the world will follow if they're not already following. You know, you see protests here, finally. You see them in Europe, which are not being covered by the media at all. You only see it on social media. But my friends, again, the world will follow Israel. Israel is the leader in this. Israel is the forefront. I always told my family when I was in Israel, I was WhatsApping them, I said, whatever you see, uh, whatever I'm telling you is going to be two months, in two months is going to be in America. Whatever the status is, situation, months of, is going to be in America in two months. And lo and behold, that's what happened. Whether it's lockdowns or passports or shots or this or that and the other policies, just just you wait, I said. In, in a month or two, that's what's going to, and, and that's how it goes. But it's more draconian outside of Israel. It seems like it's draconian in Israel, but it's more, it ends up being more draconian outside because in Israel you have, again, you have these decrees, but you have, uh, it's a combination of things. You have a, basically a balagan, you know, a disaster uh, implementation. You have um, this, organi- this organization and uh, also the, you know, the of Hashem, you know, you have miracles and all kinds of things. But you leave Israel, and they're doing the same policies, but those policies are, you know, being enacted. And again, go to a place like Australia and New Zealand, it's, it's, my friends, this is something out of like Mad Max dystopia. That's where they film Mad Max, That maybe that's why. <laughs> you know, it used to be a penal, co- penal colony. The country started as a penal colony, and now it is a penal co- colony for all its citizens. I mean, everybody understands that, so... Yeah, my friends, I mean, everything begins and ends with Israel. And unfortunately, the leaders of Israel at the moment have been, I don't know if you want to say the word, use the word overtaken maybe, or or gripped, let's say gripped by the Sitra Ahra. These these people are, you know, my friend Frank uh, Zelenko, Dr. Zelenko's brother likes to say, they are being controlled by the ministering angels. Or in, in Hebrew, it's actually Malachi Sharet. You know, like when we sing about um, when we sing on Shabbat, Malachi Sharet, Malachi Shalom, all that kind of stuff. Uh, so these are ministering angels who come on Shabbat, but also there's other ones that are controlling, you know, uh, the machinations of politics, of world events, of you know, the minds of men, the minds of leaders, the souls of leaders, really. And um, that's pretty much what's happening now. You could see it. You could look at somebody like a Bennett and you could see like kind of the darkness in the person's eyes where you never saw it before. You can see, you know, Bibi in the same thing. You could see other people um, around the world, leaders. You know, guys, in closing, I just want to read to you um, a thing that's kind of related. Uh, somebody wrote, this is from a blog called Tor- Tomer Devora, but it's a blog, not the book, but the blog. And this person wrote about the, uh, there's going to be, I don't know if you guys heard, there's going to be a, um, you know, that stupid climate uh, summit in Ro- in Rome. Rome? Why is it? I thought it was in Scotland. Oh, I guess it's in Rome. Or is it Scotland? Ah, oh, whatever. There was somebody talking about, here you go. Expect a Rome summit. Okay, here we go. So basically, this person's talking about, so they, they referenced that it's actually the 73rd year of uh, since the founding of the state of Israel, right? So, yeah, the G20. Uh, so here it says, oh, this is the G20, not the climate summit. Okay, fine. So it says, in the 73rd year, so this is from the Zohar, 73rd year, all the kings of the world shall assemble in the great city of Rome. This is from Zohar, Kabbalah. And, and Kadosh Baruch Hu will shower fire and hail the meteoric sto- stones upon, upon them until... Uh, they are wiped out from the world, and only those kings who did not go to Rome will remain in the world. And they shall return and wage other wars. During this time, the Mashiach will declare himself throughout the whole world, and many nations will gather around him together with many armies from, from all corners of the world. So my friends, let's read. At least four leaders from a group of G20, this is from Reuters, uh, wealthy, nations, wealthy nations will set to miss this month's summit in Rome that hosts, it, uh, that hosts Italy had hoped would be an in-person event, diplomats officials said. Russian President Vladimir Putin announced on Tuesday that he would definitely not attend on October 30th, 31st meeting. 30th, yeah. 
So this is this like the Shabbat and Sunday. The third leader to formally pull out after Japan's new Prime Minister Fumio Kishida and Mexican President Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador. By the way, I love that guy. Obrador, the guy makes amazing speeches recently in Mexico. Putin and Kishida have said that they follow proceedings via video link, while a spokesman for Obrador said he would send Foreign Minister Marcelo Ebrard in his place. Other countries have yet to make official um, announcements, but a diplomatic source in Rome said Chinese President Xi Jinping was unlikely to come, so Chinese President's also not going. There was also uncertainty over whether Brazilian President Bolsonaro would show up. By contrast, Joe Biden has confirmed he will come, along with leaders of Argentina, Australia, Canada, Britain, France, Germany, India, Indonesia, South Korea, South Africa, Saudi Arabia, Turkey, and the EU, I guess, officials. Uh, the U.S., on behalf of the rest of the world, is currently trying to prevent all, so then uh, this person's adding their thing, all construction in Judea and Samaria, while at the same time attempting to reopen a consular office to the PA in Jerusalem, while, while the Arab Rav regime, Bennett and company, which is attached to the West, is doing its damnness to destroy everything connected to a Jewish state. Uh, and then he added, at the General Assembly uh, UN in 2000, September 10th this year, 2021, the celebration of its 75th anniversary, the UN announced the formation of UN 2.0. We will launch a UN 2.0 that offers more relevant system-wide multilateral and multi-staker holder solutions to the challenges of the 21st century. My friends, you know, I feel like people are left and right just like putting lipstick on pigs, whether it's Facebook and Meta, whether it's this UN 2.0 thing. My friends, they're just like trying to rebrand themselves. You know, it's like same crap, different name, you know, same, same SHIT, different name. Guys, you can't put, you know, put, put lipstick on a pig, you know what I'm saying? Anyway, guys, you can see what's going on. You can see that who's being controlled and by these forces and who isn't. But I think that ultimately Hashem is in charge of all of this. And, uh, you know, it falls in line with what I've been talking about, about the Shemitah year. And uh, all the MSs, all the tr truth and meth that's going to come out, that is coming out. But also what we might see at the end of this Shemitah year. Anyway, guys, it's been real. And if I don't talk to you, Shabbat Shalom. And uh, be safe.